Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be showing you my minimalist luxury makeup collection. And I already did this video, but in today's video, I'm going to be trying on all those products. Not every product, because that would be a very long, weird video with like 10 layers of blush on. I already did a video where I talked about each of these products in depth. And some of the categories had multiple products. So I thought in today's video, I would take my number one favorite from each category and I would show them to you in action. I know a lot of you guys find it helpful to see the products applied on camera. So this is a get ready with me video using my curated makeup collection, all my favorites in my makeup collection. If I had to really narrow down my makeup collection and just keep like those number one products for each category. So if you want to see me try on all my favorites from my minimalist luxury makeup collection, just keep watching. So for my minimal collection, if I could just choose one primer, I would go with the Chantecaille Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint, just because I really like that I can use this in a multitude of different ways, and I really like the results I get. So with this product, my favorite way to use it is actually as like an under eye primer, just because I like to use it under the eyes, almost as if I was using an eye cream. And when I apply this product onto my skin, I don't require as much concealer in that area because this adds just a bit of brightness to my under eyes. It adds a little bit of color correcting because this has a slight pink undertone to it. And then I also will take that product and apply it to the high points of the cheeks. And I'll also apply it above the brow, just where I want a little bit of shine to my skin. I will add this product. And it's very beautiful, it's very subtle. I've almost gone through this whole jar. I love it so much. So for me, complexion was probably the hardest category to actually narrow things down because I just am really big with complexion products. They're probably my favorite thing to try out and to narrow it down is very difficult. So I decided for a light coverage foundation, the foundation that I would choose is the Chantecaille. This is the Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation. Just because on an everyday basis, this is such a great foundation to utilize. I really like the results of this foundation. I really like that I can get a no makeup makeup look out of this product. So it looks very sheer on the skin. You can make this look like it's undetectable on the skin. So if I want my skin to look beautiful in person, say I'm going to like an event or something where I'm going to be up close and personal with people, especially if I'm going to be outdoors, this is the foundation I will use because you can't actually see it sitting on the skin. It looks like real skin. That is a great description for this foundation is that it actually mimics real skin. And I really like the finish of this because a lot of times sheer foundations, they have like a glowy, they have a glowy finish or a more hydrating finish. This is a very natural skin-like finish. So it's not going to add any sort of glow, but it's also not going to be mattifying on the skin. It really does mimic skin texture, which I really love. And again, when I apply it to my skin, you can see freckles through my skin. You can see a little bit of skin texture through it, but it does just add a little veil of perfection, a little veil of blur. It does blur the pigmentation and it blurs the pores and it blurs the skin just ever so slightly. Is it the most blurring foundation I have in my collection? No, but it does do a great job of just really giving you a beautiful skin texture and it does look really, really gorgeous. Like I said, in person, one of my favorite foundations. And then if I was picking a special occasion foundation, this is where I really struggled because it was narrowed down between the Clé de Peau Cushion Foundation, the Radiant Cushion Foundation Dewy or the Chanel Sublimage Lassance de Ton. I'm having a very hard time picking between the two of these. I kind of just want to call them out, both out because I feel like they will work better for different people. If you're looking for something that's full coverage and you can really manipulate, so you can use in a variety of different ways, I would go with the Clay de Peau Radiant Foundation, Radiant Cushion Foundation Dewy, just because you can get like full coverage out of this foundation, but you can also just apply a very sheer layer of this so that it looks like skin, like you can get a sheer coverage if you just use a very small amount of product and really apply it over the skin in a generous layer. If you want something that's medium coverage that you can't really build past medium coverage, then I would go with the Chanel Sublimage La Sans Satin. This one gives a beautiful elegance to the skin. It just gives a very subtle glow, almost like it's like a beautiful candlelight glow. That's how I like to describe it. Where this Clay de Peau Radiant Cushion Foundation Dewy does give a bit more of a glow to the skin. I would say like this one on me is more like a skin finish. This one gives me a bit more of a glow. And I want to call this one out because this is my mom's favorite for a special occasion. Like my mom is 65 and she always uses this foundation for special occasions. She loves it so much. She loves the way it looks on her skin. And 
she also loves this foundation as her everyday foundation. So I did kind of want to just call them both out because, you know, I'd probably just end up buying both of them if I'm being honest. But for today's video, I'm going to go in with the Chanel Soubalage La Sans Détente because I, I think I personally would pick this. But then I'm also struggling because I'm like, but what if I was having a really bad breakout? Then I would go with the Clay de Peau and I wouldn't have anything fuller coverage. I would just have this and it wouldn't really build up. But I still think even if I was having a bad breakout, I still like my skin to shine through. So I'd probably... That, this is a tough one, but I'm just going to apply the Chanel Supermodge La Sans Detente. So I'd like to just apply, as always, to the palm of my hand, and I will take this Shiseido. I don't know the full name of this brush, but I will link it down below. It is just their foundation kabuki brush, and I like to evenly distribute that foundation onto the palm of my hand and really make sure it is, again, evenly distributed onto the brush so that I get an, get an even pigmentation down when I apply this foundation to my skin. And because this brush is so big, it just applies your foundation so evenly and very quickly as well. And I really like this because this really buffs your foundation into your skin so it's not sitting on top of the skin I used to be an avid beauty blender user, but now that my skin's not as dry, I can use this foundation brush, and I just love the way that this applies foundation, because like I said, your foundation's never going to be sitting on top of your skin. This really melts it into the skin. And I love this Chanel Suvel Modulus La Sans Detente. You know what? I haven't used this in a while, and this just reminds me how much I love it, because you get such a beautiful coverage. It gives you coverage without it looking like heavy makeup on your skin. Like you still, again, I can see freckles shining through, which I really like when my freckles shine through because I like to see a little bit of pigmentation through because it just, again, it will look more like real skin, especially in person. If you're looking for a blurring foundation that will give you a subtle glow, this one, because it does blur, especially the texture in the front of your face in a very subtle, beautiful way. It adds like that filtered effect, so you look like you have an Instagram filter on your skin, but it doesn't look overly perfected in that you look like you're wearing makeup. It gives the most beautiful, buildable to medium coverage, and it lasts all day long on me. And I just think it looks like such beautiful, elegant skin. I love this. And then I like to just run over everything with a damp beauty blender sponge because this ensures that I don't have any excess foundation sitting on top of my skin. It's going to really ensure that none of this looks makeup-y or heavy on my skin. For cream bronzers, I would pick the Chantecaille Sheer Glow Bronze Face Tint. This is, for my get ready with me, I guess I'm kind of just narrowing it down to one product per category. But this one is just such a fantastic product. I love everything about this. So I like to just take about a pea size amount, maybe a, a little more. Get it evenly, again, distributed onto the palm of my hand. And then I'll go in with this BK Beauty 101 brush. This is probably my favorite brush to apply a cream bronzer, especially one that's so sheer because this is a very dense brush and I like to apply it to the skin that way. So I'll start on my forehead. And again, I really enjoy this product because it's a multitasking product. So it works beautifully, as you can tell, as a cream bronzer as I'm applying it over top of foundation. But this product also mixes beautifully into foundation. So if I have a foundation that's too light for me, or if I just want to add a bronze tint to my skin, mixing, again, that pea size amount of product in with my foundation is such a great tool to just deepen the foundation, warm the foundation up. And another way I really love to utilize this product is in the summertime. I like to just use this as an all-over skin tint. So similar to how I'd apply like the Chantecaille Future Skin Foundation, I would just use it as a sheer tint of coverage. I would apply it all over the skin, just as my skin tint. And you can apply this product as a skin tint because what it does is it really do does blur and filter your skin. Like your skin just looks like you've applied an Instagram filter, but you don't look like you're wearing any makeup because it doesn't really have, like this doesn't have any sort of like coverage to it. It might just have a very sheer amount of coverage, but really it does just look, again, like skin. You can't notice any makeup sitting on your skin, but you will look like you have a bronze glow. And that's something I like because I do self tan, so my neck and my chest is always deeper than my face. So if I just want to even out my skin tone, this is such a great product to use just as your foundation. And it does work really well as a foundation. And then you can just go in with a concealer over top. 
but how this looks like again just as a cream bronzer it is just a skin enhancer like it doesn't look like I've applied a heavy cream bronzer you can't notice that just because this doesn't have a huge contrast between my skin so my skin is like a light to medium tone and this I would say it's not a really deep bronzer which is the downfall of this I wish Chantecaille would release this in more shades because the formula of this is so so good I also wish they would release this in like skin tone shades because I would literally buy this as a foundation I love the ingredients in this product as well I have extremely sensitive acne prone skin and this never breaks me out and this just looks like natural bronze skin I I can't get enough of this. So for concealer, this was a very easy choice for me and maybe obvious for you if you are not new to my channel, but I chose their Surat Dewdrop Concealer. I actually, this is the shade five, but number four actually does work better for me. Five is a little bit too deep for me. And I found that I actually really like to apply this concealer, like so you could apply it directly under your eyes. But I've been liking just applying it to the palm of my hand. Yeah, this is just how I like to apply products. I'll go in with this Clay de Peau. This is their flat concealer brush. And I'll apply it under the eyes just very lightly. Because this does have like, definitely I would say a fuller coverage. It has, even though it's called the Dew Drop Concealer, and if you are familiar with the Dew Drop Foundation, you would probably think that this is going to have a dewy finish. But I actually find this has more of a skin-like finish. Like it doesn't have any sort of radiance to it or any sort of glow. And my favorite thing about this concealer is that it literally will not move all day. You will apply it in the morning and it will look just as good from when you've applied it in the morning to it does in the evening time. It has some sort of magic to it, some sort of witchcraft, because I don't understand how a concealer can look that amazing when you've literally worn it for eight hours. I'm always so impressed by how it wears. If you haven't tried out this concealer, you must. It is just hands down the best concealer formula that I have ever, ever tried. And yeah, it's it's really good. So Syrah did send me this concealer in two different shades. And so I gave one to my mom and this is my mom's favorite concealer as well. Like again, my mom is 65. I really need to have her back on the channel. You guys have been requesting it. And I picked the other shade and I went through it and I bought this shade myself. And I will pick up the shade four because again, that works a little bit better for me. Five is just slightly too deep for me. And then with that excess product, I do like to just clean up the edge of this outer corner of my eye. And you can see I'm doing it in this lifted shape, kind of like if I were to do a winged liner, you know how you have your winged liner, like you wing it up. I'm kind of winging my concealer up because this will give my eyes a more lifted shape. And I do have a little bit of redness and darkness in the outer corner. So that will help conceal that area. So just give me a bit more brightness and makes my eyes look a little bit younger, a little bit more awake, and just more youthful. If I had any sort of blemish to conceal or any sort of dark spots, the Clay de Peau, the concealer is literally the only concealer you need. So good for spot concealing. Not great under the eyes because it's definitely a more dense concealer that's very high pigment. But if I have any sort of blemish like I do there, I will just go in with a tiny bit of product. That is literally all you need and I'll apply it in any areas where I just want to spot conceal. And this just is such a great concealer for that because when you apply it onto the skin, it really does meld with the foundation that you've applied. So it doesn't look like, sometimes if people spot conceal, you can really notice it on their skin because it looks really heavy in one area. But this doesn't, it definitely, it's a heavier, it is a heavier concealer, but the way it applies on the skin, it does really meld in with your skin with that foundation, just because it has this really great texture. It's like almost a waxy consistency. So it does really, again, just meld into the skin. It becomes one with the foundation with your skin. Of course, you have to pick the right color. I wear the shade Almond and it works really well for me. And this is just such a great concealer because the longevity of this is really great as well. So when you are spot concealing, you want to ensure that that concealer is going to last you all day long. And this lasts all day long. It doesn't move. It doesn't budge. So for spot concealing, that is kind of the only concealer that I need in my collection. Now these probably won't be a surprise, but again, I mentioned more blushes in my video where I talk through my minimal makeup collection. But if I were only going to choose kind of one blush, these Valentino blushes are just so good. I also really like the Syrah blush. I was having a hard time kind of narrowing it down because for the Valentino, I probably would buy two shades. I really like the shade nine for a really beautiful neutral option. 
but then for a pop of color, the shade two is absolutely gorgeous. This formula is just so different. It's a very unique formula. Yeah, the packaging kind of sucks, but this formula, it's a cream to powder product, so it never looks like a powdery, heavy makeup. And I would say the Syrah, this is just, again, a very unique formula. It feels... It actually, it doesn't feel, it applies, again, very similarly to the Valentino, where it applies like a powder, you get that ease of application, but it really does melt into the skin like a cream product would. It doesn't look like powder sitting on your skin. It is such an elegant, gorgeous formula. And the sh shade the Rosé de Soir is probably my favorite because this is almost like a bronzer blush hybrid. It just looks really beautiful. What am I going to use today? I feel like I haven't used the Valentino in a while. So you know what? I'm just going to go in with that today. I'm going to mix these two together. So I'm just going to dip back and forth. I like to just take a bit of the pink, a bit of the kind of peachy color, and then I'll just mix back and forth just twice to, and again, getting that excess product off on my hand, taking a Ray Morris Deluxe Kabuki. It's probably my favorite blush brush and I have been liking applying blush first before any bronzer or sort of product and just getting a hint of color on the cheeks. Actually, I do feel like I could build up that color, but before I do, I do want to apply my lips because I feel like sometimes when I go in with the lips before the cheek color, I can gauge how much blush I can add. So this is the Merit Signature Lightweight Lipstick in the shade Baby. I'm sure you saw that coming because this has been my holy grail lipstick and for I want to say years at this point I just love it because it's a beautiful neutral tone it doesn't lean like too cool or too warm and I just love this shade it's like my lips but better so so good I really did wonder if this YSL was going to replace my Too Faced or like my Chantecaille lip glosses but yeah for my minimal collection this YSL, the Candy Glaze in the shade 02, is, it's just so good. I've already used up a full one of these and I have bought myself a backup because I just can't get enough of it. I love it so much. So that's that applied. And I do think I could actually go in with a little bit more blush. So I'm just going to, again, go back in with those colors and I'm going to apply just a little bit more color to my cheeks. And you can see I'm just pressing this blush on. I don't buff or sweep around. If you just press your blush into your skin, you're going to get the best results and it's not going to disrupt any makeup underneath. And for bronzer, I guess I wouldn't even necessarily call this a bronzer. This is more of a skin enhancer. This doesn't really go on like a typical bronzing product. And to apply this, I do like to use a denser brush just because, again, it applies very sheerly. This is like a very sheer pigmented sheerly pigmented bronzer. You can barely even see it swatched on my hand. It basically looks like my chest color, but just like half or even one shade deeper. So I really like this because this is just going to enhance my complexion. Again, take a bit of product, get that off. This is a Sony G, Niji Pro, really great. I also really like the Refer 22 brush to apply this product. And this is just, again, it's very beautiful. It is very skin enhancing. It just makes your skin look more beautiful versus it being like, whoa, that's a bronzer on your skin. I just find, I've just been really not gravitating towards bronzers, especially if they're really deep, because they just contrast so highly against my face. And I'm just someone that looks better with like less makeup applied to my skin or things that just aren't so harsh or noticeably makeup. And I really like that this is just a very subtle bronzer that just makes your skin just look like it has dimension to it. It makes your skin tone it just kind of brings your skin back to life. Like if you apply a foundation all over your skin, you can look a little dull. You can almost look a little dead. Just, it kind of takes the life out of your skin where this brings the life back to your skin without it being a detectable product on your skin. It is very smoothing. It's a very blurring powder. So this is just my, probably what I would pick as my number one favorite for my minimal collection. Highlighter was tough, but I've been really enjoying, especially for a powder product, this Bare Minerals Gen Nude Highlighting Blush. This is a very creamy powder, and I really like this for a powder product because it literally makes your skin look glossy. It makes your skin look like it is wet. It just makes your skin look healthy, and this is just the most beautiful powder highlighting product because it doesn't look like a powder at all. It is very subtle. A lot of powder products are very high intensity. They give you this like glow from space, this really intense look. But this, 
doesn't. This looks very subtle. There are no glitter chunks in this. There are no shimmer particles. This is just very flattering on the skin. If you're someone that doesn't really like highlighters because they're too much, I would go for this one. It is gorgeous and the color of this is really beautiful. And yeah, it's not the most luxurious thing in the world, but this product, it feels luxurious. It's so great. And then as a final step for my minimal collection, you have to get the Chantecaille Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. I can't believe this still isn't out of stock yet. I like to pick it up with my Sony G buffing brush, get off the excess, and then run over the edges so that all my products meld into each other. So there's not harsh lines between where I've applied the bronzer, the blush, and the highlighter. Everything is just seamless and it all comes together and it actually looks more natural when you apply a little bit of this product to really blend in your makeup. So again, there's no harsh lines. There's no product standing on top of your skin. It's all just blended in. And then finally, the best part is the blurring powder. This is the powder that makes everything come together. This is the Clay de Peau Refining Press Powder. I'll take this just on a Sonia G Detail Pro because I like precise powder application. And you just apply this to areas where you want to add a filtered look, where you want to add a blurred look to your skin. Or if you're someone that's oily, where you want to mattify your skin. So if you're really oily, you might, wait, might want to use a bigger brush. But I just like this for precise detailing on my skin because I'm dry so I don't require that much powder but I do like my skin to be blurred in specific areas and this powder like if you only need one powder in your collection make it this it is the best blurring tool it is just my favorite filtered powder that makes your skin just look so beautiful but again it doesn't alter the look of your makeup because it is translucent it's just phenomenal I feel like I've been playing with the Merit shadows so much lately and I've already shown you the other clay de peau quad so I'm going to take this this is probably my number one favorite Clay de Peau quad if I had to pick one. This is the Clay de Peau quad in the Beach Pebbles shade. So I'm just going to go ahead and go in with my refer. This is an O2 brush. And I'm going to start off by, you know what, no, I'm actually going to take my fingertips and I'm going to apply this primer shade all over the eyelid. This you can just use with fingers, you can use a brush, it is very subtle. The shade has like a putty texture. It is the most unique shadow I've ever experienced. And it is such, it's just a really cool eyeshadow palette because you have this really unique primer shade and then the rest of the shadows are a typical powder formula. I'm just dipping into this matte brown shade right here. And I'm taking a Refer 01 brush and I'm going to use that as a transition shade. So I'm gonna start by applying it to the outer corner of my eyes. And then once I've gotten a little bit of color deposit there, then I will bring that color into the crease just ever so slightly. I only really like just a light amount of color in my crease just to add a soft transition, but I never apply too much color there. I'm gonna take a flat brush and I'm gonna take this deepest shade. This is a brown with a little bit of a sheen. And I'm going to press this into the upper lash line kind of as an eyeliner. Really enjoy this as a liner. And if you just use a powder shadow versus using a pencil, you're gonna keep that area really soft. I did wanna add though, if I could choose just one liner, like pencil liner, I really like this Victoria Beckham Satin Kajal liner in the shade Cinnamon. I have not really been a huge fan of the formula previously because it's so creamy. I find it a little bit challenging to work with especially if you're a beginner. So I'm going to just very, very lightly pencil that across the upper lash line. And then again, if you're looking for more longevity, you can just do this. You can take that powder or shadow that I was using before and just go across where I've applied that eyeliner, smudge out that eyeliner slightly, and then this will set that Kajal that I applied and just make it so it's slightly longer lasting. I already find the Victoria pencil, Victoria Beckham pencil is pretty long lasting, but this will just ensure it doesn't move and this will add a little bit more intensity to the look. And then as a final step, I'm gonna take this lightest shimmer, actually no, before we do that, I'm gonna move into my, if I had to just choose like a single one and done eyeshadow, I would choose the Chantecaille Mermaid Eye Color, the Mermaid Eye Color and the shade Copper. Just because I feel like this is great for any occasion, you could wear it for a night out, you could also wear it during the daytime because this has a very beautiful, sophisticated sheen. It is not too shimmery where it looks, looks obnoxious or over the top. I really, really like that it has that really refined shimmer to it. 
and it's not one of those shimmers that has like sporadic shimmer particles it is very consistent shimmer so that it just gives you a beautiful sheen you get that glossy lid effect really 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 pretty and i'm just applying it all over the lid up to the crease to meet that now, as a final step i'm going to go into that lightest color here and I just want to bring a little bit of dimension to the look. So I'm going to first sweep that onto the inner corner of my eyes, just very lightly. And then I'm going to take a little bit more of that color and I'm going to tap it right onto the center of the lid and bring it up to again, meet the crease of my eye, just in the center. For the lower lash line, I'm going to dip back into that matte brown shade. And I'm just going to apply that from the outside corner and I'm going to bring it up to meet that outer corner and then just sweep it inwards. I just went ahead and added my mascara and my favorite mascaras are the Dior. This is the Dior Show Maximizer 3D Triple Action Lash Primer Serum Volume Curl and Definition. Longest name ever, I don't think that's necessary. It's basically Dior's lash primer, really excellent. I really love this to prime my lashes. It gives me, um, it just conditions my lashes and it makes my mascara that I apply over top look way better. And then I took the YSL Lash Clash Mascara in the shade Brown. This is just my holy grail mascara. I really like it, it offers length separation. I wish it was a little bit better at being a little bit longer wearing, a little bit more waterproof. It does smudge a little bit, but that's okay, I like the effect so much. Yeah, that is everything for this look. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all my favorite products in my minimalist makeup collection. Me trying them on so you can see all these products in action. I would love to hear from you. Tell me a little bit about your minimalist makeup collection if you choose to have one or if you were to have one. Give me like five products that you would keep in your collection. Those like five holy grail products that you can't stop purchasing that you really love that um, kind of your collection isn't complete without this product. I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it, and I'll see you in my next video.